Classification of real number. This is the second video over this. The first video, I tried to kind of explain everything in full detail. In this video, we're going to be working examples over how to classify real numbers. So this is what we worked through last time. I took each one of these groups and tried to explain it in some detail for you and possibly give you some examples. And now we're going to see how this all fits together in specific homework problems. So the first question that I have here gives you a whole bunch of numbers, a whole list of numbers. And then it wants to know from this list of numbers, which of this list is integers, that's example one, which is irrational or rational numbers, example two, and example three, which of that list I provided for you are real numbers. What I would like you to do is to pause the video and see if you can figure all of this out on your own. Okay, let's start with example one. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to define integers for you once more. Hopefully, if you redefine each of these when you're working through the example, the question makes much more sense to you. Integers are positive and negative whole numbers. So if I can pick out any whole numbers from this list, both positive and negative, then that's going to fit into example one. So I'm just going to work from the left to the right of this list. Negative 15 over 2, that's of course a fraction, so it doesn't go in there. 0 is a whole number, so that fits in there. Negative 3 is a whole number, so that fits in there. Pi does not fit in there. Square root of 9, at first glance, it might not look like it fits in there, but it actually does. And these are the type of problems where they try and trick you. Square root of 9 fits in here because it comes out evenly. Square root of 9 simplifies to be 3. Because 3 times 3, or 3 squared, gives you 9. So that actually does fit into the list of integers, even though it might not look like it at first glance. Back to my list. 2.35 repeating is a decimal. 4.16 is a decimal. Square root of 7 does not come out evenly, so that doesn't go in there. Negative square root of 17 is a whole number. Square root of 5 over 4 doesn't fit in there. Point 0.3412 is a decimal. And the last two of these are fractions, which do not simplify as whole numbers. So I have my final answer here. 0, negative 3, square root of 9, which simplifies to be 3, and negative 17. So hopefully now you completely understand what this problem is asking for. So if you haven't finished example two or example three yet, now would be the perfect time to pause the video and do so. Example two, which of the list are irrational numbers and which of the list are rational numbers? And the reason that I put both of these questions in the same example is because it's got to fit in one or the other of the group. It cannot be irrational and rational at the same time. So whatever doesn't fit into the first group, it's definitely going to fit into the second group. I'm actually going to define my rational numbers or pick out my rational numbers first. And then we'll kind of just put our leftovers into the irrational group. So rational numbers, those are anything that can be written as a fraction. So whenever you see this word rational numbers, you should be thinking of the prefix, which is ratio. And ratio is just a fancy word for fraction. So rational numbers, ratios, or fractions. So we're going to do the same thing that we did with example one. We're just going to work left to right of this list, and we're going to figure out whether they are rational numbers. And if not, that's going to go into our irrational number box. So first number on my list, negative 15 over 2. That is written as a fraction, so that does go into my rational number group. Second number, 0 is a whole number. Of course, that can be written as a fraction. Negative 3 is a whole number which can be written as a fraction. Pi. Pi is one of those examples that I gave you on the previous slide. It is a decimal that does not stop and does not repeat. So pi 
is not a rational number. And I'll come back and put that in the list of irrational numbers here in a second. Square root of 9. We already said it simplified into a whole number um, earlier, so that means it goes into my rational number group because it is a whole number. 2.35 does fit into my rational number group because rational numbers accept decimals that terminate and repeat. And this is an example of a repeating decimal. 4.16166666. Now this has a pattern that goes with it, but I cannot write this number with an overline symbol like I saw in my previous example. So, even though it has a pattern, it is not a repeating decimal, hence it is not a rational number, it is irrational. Square root of 7 does not come out evenly, so that is a decimal that does not stop and does not repeat. And if you don't believe me, type it in your calculator. Negative 17 is a whole number, fits in there. Square root of 5 over 4. That is a tricky one, and that might be one of the trickiest ones on this list. It is a fraction, it's obviously a fraction, but half of the fraction, square root of 5, is an irrational number because square root of 5 does not come out evenly. So if any part of the number is irrational, that makes the whole part of the fraction irrational. So square root of 5 over 4 is an irrational number. 0 0.3412 is a decimal that stops, so it's rational. 3 divided by pi. Half of it is irrational because pi is irrational. That makes the whole part of this fraction irrational. 27 over 91, those are both rational numbers in each part of the fraction, so that means my whole fraction is rational. So my Q group or my rational numbers are those ones that we've went through and listed in purple here. So that means the ones that I crossed out or my leftovers, those are my irrational group. So my double bar H are my irrational numbers. Pi, 4.16 with the pattern but not repeating. Square root of 7 because it doesn't come out evenly. Square root of 5 over 4 because square root of 5 doesn't simplify, meaning the whole part of my fraction is irrational. And 3 divided by pi. Same reason. Pi is irrational, so that makes my whole fraction irrational. And so we've taken all of those numbers and we put them into one or the other category. Rational, whether fractions, or whole numbers or decimals that stop or repeat, and irrational, which basically takes care of everybody else, or decimals that do not stop and decimals that do not repeat. My last example, example three here. Which of the list are real numbers? Well, if you remember back, real numbers is the largest box that we could possibly think of. The only number that isn't a real number is imaginary numbers. And I told you we would not be referencing any imaginary numbers at this time. So that means every single one of these numbers up here are real numbers. I can take every single one of these numbers and represent them on a number line. So in example three, what I could do is rewrite down every one of the numbers, or I'm going to take the lazy way out. I'm just going to say all numbers on the list. And so at this point, we've declared which of this list are integers, rational and irrational, as well as real numbers. I'm going to end this video here. In the next video, I'm going to be working two different types of examples classifying real numbers.